Albert Breer, the Monday morning quarterback, never has to defend himself. He's always right, and he joins us right now. Albert, thanks for joining us. Uh, let me start with the poll question, Seton. Cough that up for uh, for Albert. Yeah, Dan, who had the worst weekend? We have uh, Alabama, we have uh, the Giants, and we have the Bengals. Out of those three. And USA Basketball. <laughs> Threw them in. There. Well, I was gonna. I was gonna ask who we lost to. Uh, we lost to Canada and Germany. We lost to Canada in it, basketball. I think of the bronze medal game. Too. Yeah, and bronze. No, Canada's had a, has a really talented team. There's a lot they of guys they? in the NBA who are from Canada that you might not realize. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did we like? But we sent over like our C team or well, something. It, Albert, stay in your lane here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Stay well, in your lane. Um, I would say that the 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 one that would to me of like the three. I think you mentioned the Giants, the Bengals, and Alabama. I think the Giants is the toughest loss, just because I, I think the Bengals and the Bengals is easy to couch it where it's at. Like like all right, this hat this is a result in some way ways of. A really sloppy track in Cleveland, bad conditions. Joe Burrow not having a lot of practice time or work with his receivers. The Bengals are going to work it out. Alabama's probably going to work it out too, right? Like now, are they going to be back in the national title game? Maybe, maybe not, but their season's not down the drain. The Giants, you got to ask a lot of questions about, you know, what happened there. And, you know, obviously they had a great year last year, but a lot of things went right for them last year. And it was almost like the, it's almost like the, 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 the bill came due on that all at once. I mean, I, I, it was almost like I had to re-remember looking at the box score. The Cowboys first touchdown was their 26th point of the game. Their first offensive touchdown was their 26th point of the game, which is wild to think about. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think the Giants are probably the team of those three that's doing the most soul-searching, I would say, which puts you in the position to answer that question. Yeah, we tend to look at the negative. Like, that team got blown out. The Bengals got blown out. The Giants got blown out. Uh, and and we don't focus on the team that, you know, did the blowing out. Mm -hmm. Dallas, how much credit do you give them without overreacting to them? How much credit do you give the Cleveland Browns without overreacting to it? Yeah, I, I think Cleveland's interesting because of the new coordinator. And I think this is maybe one of those storylines that we didn't talk about a lot about, um, you know, back when Jim Schwartz was hired in January, February, whatever it was, but wind up might wind up really impacting the NFL season because I think they have horses on that side of the ball. You know, obviously Miles Garrett's one of the best players in the sport. Their secondary played incredible yesterday, and they've got players back there like, you know, a couple of first-round picks and Denzel Ward and Greg Newsom. Um, and I think we believe their offense can be pretty good. You know, like if Deshaun Watson gets back close to what he was a few years ago, their offensive line's really good. They had a bad injury yesterday and in losing Conklin, but they've got a young kid in Dewan Jones they like in that spot. Nick Chubb's been one of the best backs in football. Um if that defense comes around now, all of a sudden they're pretty complete, you know, and Jim Schwartz is a guy who 20 years ago was the boy wonder defensive coordinator of the Titans was the defensive coordinator more recently of a Super Bowl champion Eagles team. Like he's a really sharp coach. And, you know, we all talked a lot about Vic Fangio getting hired in Miami and rightfully so like Vic's, you know, Vic made an impact yesterday in, in, in getting Jalen Phillips free to, 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 to get the sack to close the chargers out. Um, Jim Schwartz is pretty damn accomplished too. So that's sort of what I take out of that one is like, if you're looking at the Browns and you want to say, maybe the arrow is pointing up here is that they have been pretty competitive over Kevin Spansky's first three years, and they've done it without being very good on defense. And so if Jim Schwartz can get a really good group of players playing to the level they should be playing at, maybe the Browns are more of a threat and what could be the strongest division in football than we thought. More surprising that uh, the L.A. Rams go to Seattle and win or the Chargers at home against the Dolphins and they lose. Can we deep, can, can I say, can I debunk the dumbest storyline of the offseason right here? I love a debunking? good debunking. Absolutely. <laughs> the idiots who thought that the Rams were tanking for Caleb Williams. I, like, I hope they watched every single minute <laughs> of this. Because with that coach and that quarterback, if you thought the Rams were tanking, if you thought Sean McVay came back to throw a season to get Caleb Williams, 
you have no clue who or what you're looking at. Um, is what the Rams did sustainable? I don't know. Um, you know, like they have, they're carrying 19 rookies on their 53 man roster. They're carrying $75 million in dead money. The depth thing's probably going to catch up with them eventually. Right. Like, but you know, I think one thing we've seen over the last, you know, five years is six years now is that Sean McVay's teams are going to be a bitch to deal with on a week in week out basis. And you're going to be dealing with a lot schematically on offense. They're going to be aggressive on defense. Um, the schemes are always going to be top notch um, and you're going to get really good quarterback play. And I, I can tell you talking to Matthew Stafford over the summer, like he was as happy and upbeat as I've seen him in a while because he's healthy again. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I, 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 I think the Rams are going to be a tough out on a week to week basis. Again, like they, they've got some roster issues they're going to have to work through, but this idea that they were throwing the season was so freaking stupid from the start and I think McVay, at the very least, has them competing at 500 through the end of the year. And maybe we're looking at the end of the year and they've got a bunch of young players who are on the way up. And they've got now a first round pick for the first time in almost a decade and a clean cap going into 2024. The Chargers, I don't know, man. Like, I just, it, they they just, it's, I, I try not to be surprised anymore. I guess it's the best way to answer that question, you know? Because they do have talent and they do have potential. And I thought Kellen Moore was going to make a difference. And I think Justin Herbert looked pretty good on balance. I it's just like for the last 15 years, it doesn't matter who the coach is, doesn't matter who the quarterback is, they've like perpetually been next year's team, you know. And I don't know what it is, but you always get to these moments and it's like, all right, here's where they get over the hump. And for one reason or another, they just haven't been able to do it. And so um, look, like I, I, I still think it's a playoff caliber team. The Dolphins are really talented and explosive on offense, and they add Fangio on defense. Um, but I, I think it's, it's hard not to look at the Chargers and think, is this what we've been looking at over the last fifteen years? And maybe that's not fair to Brandon Staley and and Justin Herbert because they've only been there for a few of those fifteen years. But it's just a weird thing. It just feels like the same story again. He's the Monday morning quarterback, Albert Breer, joining us on the program. The Eagles were disappointing to me. They started out 16-0, yeah. and 0, and then you let the Patriots come back. Patriots could have won that game. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how you feel about the Patriots in a loss or how you feel about the Eagles in a win. Yeah, I, I think I would agree the Eagles were a little disappointing. Um, you know, I and I think that this is – well, you know, what all coaches will tell you is week one is, you know, often an anomaly and it's really hard to take much from week one because there's so many unscouted looks across the league and there's so much the coaches are doing and there's so much of a guessing game going on. And like the one thing I can sort of, the one thing I sort of think with the Eagles out coming out of yesterday, they had such a good mix on their coaching staff the last two years with Nick Sirianni's group. And I remember hearing all these stories about, like how they were all, you know, they're all the same age and they all have kids the same age and they all work at the same pace. And I, there was even this great story. And I don't know if, you know, you read this, but I wrote this after the last regular season game for them last year. So Nick Sirianni comes from like a long line of high school football coaches. And you know how high school football coaches will go and you know, have beers on Friday nights after the game in someone's backyard, right? Nick Sirianni actually did that with his coaching staff last year. Um, after the regular season, because it was like, well, I never got the chance to do this. We can't do that in the NFL. So now we have the buy. So we're going to go and do it now. It's just sort of indicative of the mix they had there. And so you do wonder, like, they lost both their coordinators. And I'm not saying Brian, Brian Johnson and Sean Desai aren't going to be good offensive and defensive coordinators. They're really smart young coaches. But the mix was changed a little bit. You know, so you wonder if in week one, they're still working through some of that. And um, that's the question I would have. I, I felt like coming in, the Patriots would have a chance to have a top five defense. I think you saw that really encouraging yeah. what you saw from their first round pick and Christian Gonzalez. And that the plan for them was to lean on their defense and their run game and shorten games. And, you know, Bill Belichick maybe dusting off the Super Bowl 25 game plan, you know, and like how to how, how to run the team this year. I'd be really encouraged what I saw from them playing from behind. It looks like Bill O'Brien made a difference. They were creative. They played with pace early in the game. Um, they flattened out a little bit, then they adjusted, which I think was a good sign versus where they were a year ago. And Mac Jones played really well. You know, so I think 
you have an established formula in what they're going to be in New England, which I think would get them to the middle of the AFC, leaning on their run game and defense. And then yesterday you got a chance to see them play from behind and lean on their quarterback. And I think you saw some good things in that vein too. Always great to talk to you. Thank you, Albert. All right. Thanks, Dan. That's Albert Breer. He is the Monday morning quarterback.